are living in an artificially induced state of consciousness that resembles sleep. The poor and the underclass are growing. Racial justice and human rights are non-existent. We have been lulled into a trance. They have made us indifferent to ourselves, to others. We are focused only on our own gain. That is their primary method of survival. Keep us asleep. Thank you so much for joining me. I am Michael Storm. This is Toward Anarchy. We do this live right here on the Republic Broadcasting Network every Sunday, 1 to 3 p.m. Central Time. That's the middle of the nation. That's where I am in the middle of the nation. That's where the network is, although they're a little further south than I am. I'm here in Topeka, Kansas, and it is a beautiful day. Another amazing day to be alive. In fact, I even went so far as to invite the world in today so hopefully the world doesn't interrupt us as it sometimes is known to do but uh, i opened the place up and and i'm still in transition i'm still in the process of getting to a point where i redo uh my studio space entirely uh and and i've been moving around and playing with different configurations and different placements of the screens and reach of the microphone like my microphone is in a different spot right now so we'll have to we'll have to see how that works out let's see how all of these changes that I've been making on this end. And, and we'll have to see how I play out today. It was, um, it was touch and go all the way up to the last minute. I, I probably sound, hopefully I sound fine to you as far as, as, as just the general voice and my cheeriness. But I, I assure you, I, I may sound 100, but I'm, I'm floating down around 90. And yesterday it was like 80. And earlier than the week, it was zero. I, mean, it, it was, uh, I was sick for a, a good chunk of the week. It started off early in the week and it was hard to get motivated to do it. That wasn't like, you know, stuck over the throne or anything like that. I just, uh, general malaise, uh, muscle soreness, your basic minor flu uh, uh, symptoms. And uh, so, uh, you know, I dealt with it for a couple of days and, and a little bit of a headache and, and sore throat. I try not to cough. Um, and so that I don't burn up my, my throat as it is. Um, I, and so I'm not, I'm not bad off in that sense getting here today. So that's really cool. And so uh, just a bunch going on for myself this week. And I almost didn't know if I was going to be able to even pull it all together uh, at the last minute here, because I, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to sit down and do even the basics of what needed to be done, you know, create the page. If you go to towardanarchy.com. You're looking for the 1st of March. Jeff Martinez is my guest today. He's a a lifelong friend, a true uh, brother from another mother, as it were. He's also a man of faith. And this was sort of the thing that happened in the last 24 hours. I was like, all right, I've got my buddy Jeff, and we're going to come on the show. And, of course, the two of us can have a great conversation. Uh, We've known each other for many, many years. And um, we have an exclusive and mutual existence that we can share with each other all the time. Really easy to do. Very easy for us to kill off an hour-long conversation, especially if we get to take a break every couple of, uh, you know, every 20 minutes or something like that. (laughs) And and stop and and take a drink and have a cigar. The cigar is lit here. But, But what does the audience get out of that? Yeah, they get to hear us catching up. They get to hear a real conversation. All that's fine. All that's great. All of that is wonderful. But let's give them something more to talk about. I get to think about, well, Jeff is still, he's a man of faith after all of these years. Uh, you know, 47 years old. I didn't happen to mention this, but in, you know, in the last 30 days or the last 29 days, um, I, I aged. And um, I, I, we have, you know, all of that. And we grew up in the same town. We went to the same high school uh, for a uh, same schooling and for a little bit of years. Uh, it's interesting because I told you before a little bit about Jeff and how he, he had, had went away and then came back and we're still all friends and everything. And it's just an interesting little thing that, that happened in our friendship where early on when we were young and not a, an older developed friendship, but then he still came back and fell right in and we've been good friends all this time. And we had this conversation, but you know, what does the audience get to, to hear about it other than that? That's all wonderful stuff. But then I got to thinking about it. And, and it's a, it's another synergy thing. If you're at wardanarchy.com and you find 
March 1st, 2020. If you have to go through the archive or if it's right there on the front page, it should say, listen live now if you're live with me. That thing changes as you get that link right there on the page, changes as the hours and days go by leading up to the show. And uh, right now, if you're, if you're actually live with me, it'll say, listen live right now. And talks about Jeff, and I shared a couple of links with you. But what brought this on was this uh, this meme that came across. And I've been disappointed with the whole meme thing, and uh, it's taken a back seat, and I, I haven't decided where to go with it or to continue it. But in this case, this it was this one fit. It would be easy to describe. I just read it to you. These chains are too short. These chains are too long. These chains are too tight. These chains are too loose. This is the left right paradigm right but what if i don't want chains you're crazy no hear me out what if i don't want any of us to have chains this is the the anarchist versus statist argument this is the conversation that doesn't happen in the false left right paradigm the democrat uh, versus republican but it was it was posted by the anarcho christian and this is one of these things that i personally resolved uh, with myself the argument between anarchy and Christianity a long time ago. It was the easy argument for me. And I'll talk about that with Jeff, and we'll talk about the compatibility of anarchy and Christianity. Also at thwartanarchy.com, if you just go right to the front page. You can always get there from the banner. And I just want to talk about a couple of things, because, of course, we have Jeff coming up on the show. But you'll also notice that I have an email list now, and, and I call it the Anarch List, whatever. It, it, it struck me at the time as being cute. Sign up for the Anarch List. There's a big banner right there underneath the announcement for today's show, in between last week's show and today's show. It, you can't miss it. It's blue. It says sign up for the Anarch List. Uh, weekly newsletter for show updates, guest info, giveaways, and more. And I'm going. That's I maintain that list. That's not going to a third party. That's not going somewhere else. When you click on that, it takes you to a, a PHP uh, program that uh, my um, my host provides for me to use. That I maintain the database. Uh, I will not share your information with anyone. You will not find yourself on any other mailing list. Um, that is absolutely 100% my guarantee. I can't guarantee that somebody couldn't steal. Uh, you know, people are breaking into stuff all the time. Uh, we might even have to, if there was something that happened, I, I'll have to see if I can remember it. I didn't seem to jot it down. There was some big technology thing that happened here recently, um, maybe even just this past week. Was it in here? No, I didn't write it down. But it was something, uh, it, 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 look, the guys that are spending a whole lot of money to protect information are having a hard time protecting it, okay? And so if somebody wants the information, they can get it. But I will do my best, and my personal guarantee is that I will not. Nobody that I would allow to touch this information will ever share your information with anybody else. And it'll just be once a week. It'll be an update about the show. And... Uh, and that's it. That's it. That's all there is to it. Check out the show from last week. Luis got a lot of hits. It was a great show talking to him and so much again with the synergy and, and just synchronicity and everything just falling into place and being perfect and wonderful and um, beautiful and shining and an example of anarchists and um, um, voluntary cooperation and all the things that I talk about here. Because look, anarchy, anarchy has a historical and a connotative problem, doesn't it? I mean, right across the board, it has this this serious problem because it has a history and it has a connotative meaning associated with the word that people don't take it literally no rulers that's literally what the main meaning of the word is this anarchy no and archy rulers are no rulers that's it it means nothing else and i i have to say this over and over again and, and because it's very important that people understand this if i'm going to uh, have this name and have my example, uh, me and the people and the guests and the things that I do and the things that I talk about be an example, a positive example for anarchy, then I have to explain anarchy off in a, a positive light. And I've said how I don't want it to become just a, a sound bite, but I certainly have um, stumbled on my own feelings uh, and my own words for what I believe anarchy is. And, and, and I believe that it's great that I'm able to, to share that that simple idea with you and it's that we live in anarchy daily and that that we're making every second uh, choices and decisions to create and destroy to love and hate the world around us 
and and we influence the world around us and we do it without that consideration for any kind of authority we do it without the need for authority we do it on our own we do it together so so uh, uh, anarchy is simply that it's no rulers it doesn't uh, it doesn't preclude hierarchy it doesn't preclude christianity and that's the thing that i had to resolve uh, with myself and resolved it very quickly when the idea came to me christians who are anarchists anarchists who are christian who have a religious faith and and it's very simple it doesn't preclude the the hierarchy it doesn't preclude rules it just means the no rulers and it's not going to answer all those other questions for you you have to answer those questions yourself who's going to build the roads or fund the schools or all of those things that come up whenever you talk about this what about the warlords well what about the warlords that exist now that have a legal right to kill you where and you barely have a legal right to defend yourself at least under anarchy even chaos, as it were, you would still have the right to defend yourself, the natural right to defend yourself. You would still have the peace on you. You would still be able to carry it. Nobody could tell you that you don't have the right to be armed and have a peace on you and defend yourself and defend your property. And nobody would be able to have a legal codified right to tell you what your property was or that you could or couldn't have certain things or do certain things. That's anarchy for you. If you think it's anything else, then you're confused. You can't tell what I'm doing. Maybe you can. <clears throat> Excuse me. I knew it was going to cough a little bit. No, it gets a little dusty carrying it. If you don't keep it clean and pull it out and, and oiled and blown off and dusted all the time. Mine is not dusty. It, it just the slightest little bit builds up all the time from being the fact that I carry it in my pocket. I have a pocket holster so I could draw it right out of my pocket. It's right by my hand. I don't have to reach up into my waistband or out into a holster or anything. It's just right in my pocket where I have naturally reached all my life. It's a security nine new model um, uh, from Ruger. It came out earlier this year or late last year. And I love it. But I have the right to carry it everywhere. And I don't care if your uh, documents or your laws say that I can't. If it's voluntary, if this life is my life and not living for somebody else by somebody else's rules, and I'm not talking about going crazy on people and doing whatever you want. It, it's oh, Let me put it to you this way, okay? If I were... <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> if, uh, <laughs> uh, if, if, if I were anyone... Anyone, whether I call myself an anarchist or not, I would want the right to be able to fund myself, whether it was on paper or whether it was a reality, I would accept it as a reality. That is me. That is who I am. I believe that I have that right. And that right begins with the ability to keep and carry a firearm on my person in spite of what the governing authority says. This is all natural law. This has nothing to do with the Bill of Rights or anything like that. These ideas existed before the Bill of Rights, before this particular firearm came out. But you wouldn't think so by the way people treat it. Uh, they treat it like it's a new idea, like we shouldn't have to defend ourselves, like we shouldn't have to carry a gun. Uh, Saturday Night Live last night, John Mulaney was on, one of my favorite comedians, very, very funny man. But uh, these guys are all guilty of it. A lot of people in the public eye are guilty of it, talking about guns, talking about rights, talking about freedom as if they're a joke, talking about politics as if it's a joke. Well, yeah, it is a joke, but it's a joke that's very, very serious. And the implications of you choosing the wrong side or or giving the wrong image, depending on what side you hold or what arguments you make. Um, is important. It makes a difference. It makes a difference in individual real people's lives. Millions of people every year who defend themselves and it's never heard of in the news. The police don't even talk about it. Let me explain this to you. People will stick a gun in an attacker's face and walk away with nobody hurt, nobody the worse for the wear at all, and the police will not say or do a thing about it. They won't even look for the person who had a gun because the reality is they know. It's different if they catch you right at the time or around the time. Like if you were driving away from the scene, say somebody tries to assault you and you stick a gun in their face, they back down. I'm speaking from experience. This has happened to me. 
They back down. They end it. They won't be detained. So they won't wait for police so that you can defend yourself legally if you have to. They won't do it. So you walk away. He walks away. You walk away. That's the end of it. Police show up. They say, what happened? Well, they didn't catch the person with the gun. (laughs) When they do catch the person with the gun, they arrest you with the gun. They assume that you're wrong. Again, I'm speaking from experience. I know both sides of the story backwards and forwards because I've lived it. And this is this is the reality of my wanting you to be able to defend yourself as an anarchist or as anyone out there. I want I want 300 plus 325 million armed Americans, even the babies. Okay, now that's a little bit ridiculous. They can't handle it. But seriously, anybody who absolutely can and believes that you have the right to defend yourself, period. That's it. That's all you have to believe. It's not about against who. It's not why, what the circumstances are, or what with tool, what tool you do it with. It doesn't matter. Not important. The fact is, is you should have that right. And as an anarchist, I believe that the Second Amendment, your documents as a statist, Protect your right to do that in the face of government. And it says anytime, any place. And that, that government shouldn't, and they won't, again, experience. They won't even question. They won't even question the person who defends it. And you'll never hear about it. It will not make the news, and it will not make a police report. It won't make their Facebook page. If you tried to hold up the store with a gun, it'll make their Facebook page if they can't catch you. But if you stick a gun in somebody's face, who is just trying to assault you and the police show up because some third party called and said that there was somebody sticking a gun in somebody's face on the street corner somewhere. And they found the other person and the other person said, well, yeah. And they admit they had to, it was witnessed that they were trying to assault the other person. The police have nothing to say. They're lucky. That individual is lucky in that circumstance. One to be alive. That's the reality of it. You can say that I've made the wrong decision, but you can't. Because you know what? The cops carry and they kill people all the time. And they instigate. I have not done anything like that ever once in my life. And nobody has ever been harmed by my carrying a gun. Ever. They've learned a lesson that they better not. That they should not. And sometimes they learn it the hard way. Because then they assault a cop later on in a bar and get arrested. (laughs) <laughs> oh, what a clown that guy was. I, I told you about these stories a little bit all the time, but it, it's not about my stories. It's about these these realities of what I believe. And that anarchy is not going to answer that question. But the statists have answered that question for you. Sure, you can have a gun within my reasons. You can protect yourself if I say it's all right, if the voters say it's all right, if somebody other than you, the person says it's all right. That's what natural law is all about. I got to have David Horowitz back on the program. Um, I'm talking again about natural law, and he's got a bunch of stuff going on since the last time he was on the show, and I'm really interested in as well. Uh, That's what natural law is all about. It's the consequences for um, not respecting other people in their property. And and when it comes to society and getting along in a... uh, in a society with rules or laws where somebody might question your uh, defending yourself or your property. It's always supposed to be uh, that the, the questioning party is doing so to ascertain the truth, not to assess a punishment. And that's what the state does. It becomes adversarial. And it's another one of these long conversations. We're going to have to have David Horowitz back on. Just one more thing in a long line of things that that could be talked about. Listen, FloridaAnarchy.com. Share it, like, follow, subscribe, everything that we do. Uh, If you notice, if you're an archive listener, you might be struggling right now with the archive. I'm working on the archive. The archive on the website is perfect. If you go to FloridaAnarchy.com. I'm really, really far away, but uh, I should be back now. I should be right up there. Um, where was I? I, man, so much. God, I, I just wonder how much of that even came through. If it was even, oh gosh, frustrating. That's what happens sometimes with technology. What are you going to do? Um, 
man, just a few minutes, about five minutes from now, Jeff Martinez, my good buddy, is going to join us. And um, we're just going to have a conversation, but I decided to throw in this this anarchy, this Christian anarchy thing in there and the sort of compatibility between anarchy and Christianity. Uh, hopefully enough of what I was talking about before I come across there, but let me tell you about what's going on. As always, you can follow along at TowardAnarchy.com. If you have to dig into the archive, it's there. Otherwise, you're looking for March 1st. It's Jeff Martinez is my guest. Is sign up for the new letter, the newsletter, the Anarch List, right up there to know more about the show. But if you scroll down just a little bit further on the front page there, just at TowardAnarchy.com, there's the little upcoming blurb. Next week, Tony Z and Axel of Immortal Sins. We're going to listen to some great uh, heavy metal, progressive rock, um, just amazing music next week and have a great conversation with Tony and Axel. Then on the 15th, uh, educator announcer John Berlue. That's a, another special conversation for myself because John is my, if you've been following the show, he was one of my college educators. And so it'll be fun to have him on the show after years and years of not talking to him, but being connected um, and still sort of, we share a lot of things in common, a lot of things in common. So it's going to be a really interesting show for us to to catch up and and just talk about. I I, I want to get sort of honest impressions of, of myself and and school from him. Everything that we did back then, now uh, you know, all these years later, it just it, you experienced it with my conversation with Ronnie Phillips. If, if you heard that, or if you want to go into the archive and find. That particular conversation from last month is a great conversation. Just catching up like that with somebody who you hadn't talked to in years and years and still managing to even throw in some important information and topics as I always try to do a little bit, just a little bit. Some days I'm feeling better at it than others. I know last Sunday it must have been it must have been early in my my sickness that I had this past week because uh, it um you know, it, I, I felt it last week being sort of, yeah, just kind of blah um, at that day. But, uh, you know, there we are. So toward anarchy.com and click on today's date this time. And you're looking for March 1st because it is March 1st, 2020. And Jeff Martinez is going to be my guest. But I shared a couple of other links up there. The U.S. military promises to use artificial intelligence only for good. <laughs> Boy, that was close. I was worried for a minute. There's an article there about that. Also, uh, the uh, um, uh, what is Christian anarchism? And then I apologize if this takes you to some particular school of thought versus a general place, but I think it's a launching point because this is a particular political theological movement called Christian anarchism. Um, started, uh, I don't know, was it was that Dave, um, is it the same guy that I, I got the quote from? It's, but it's amazing, the synergy. This uh, Dave Andrews, the quote that I came up with this week, Jesus Christ was the supreme example of authentic anarchy, the creative nonviolent anarchist par excellence, working not from the top down, from the bottom up with the poor and the poorest of the poor to empower people enable them, and to enable them to realize the potential as men and women made in the images of God. And that's by Dave Andrews. And as always, and it's the same with that, that link that I shared before that to the Christian anarchism, these, these links, these retweets, these quotes, whatever they are, um, I share them with the, the understanding that you're going to use them to learn. Not that um, you think that I mean for you to accept them at face value or that I even accept them. They're just, they're tools for learning. I get annoyed at this internet thing and this idea that you can't, they do it to the anti-vaxxer movement all the time. This idea, they claim that, oh, you learned your information on Google, you learned your information on YouTube, on social media, this, that, and the other. Well, it's ridiculous to think that you can't learn on the internet. There's, it's a repository of information unlike anything that's ever been compiled in the history of the year. Sunday, it's amazing. It's all, It's been almost a full year now. I'm really, uh, really, really excited about what the next year holds. This this past week, I, I did manage to finish. You know, I've been talking about trying to find some ways to sort of monetize and get the show to pay for itself. It's, it's, it's a few hundred bucks a year minimum that need to be invested to, to keep the website going and some things like that. And, um, <laughs> oh, cool. All right. That's good. That's good to know. Uh, my guest will be joining us here in just a second here. I, I try to get everything. I have to get switched over, right? I'm going to have to switch over to the other, to the other program, right? 
No? Okay, I thought... Okay, I thought... Oh, all right. I did not understand that that's what was going to happen. Oh, though, well, that's even better because I thought that I was going to have to leave this thing. And after we already had a little issue with it, ah, what are you going to do? What did you say? What did David say? Tech sucks. Were, if it were not a means to an end, I'd be fishing instead. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's the way it goes. Yeah, that's just the way it goes sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't uh, you know, push the wrong button or something like that. But that's cool. All right. So uh, go to towardanarchy.com. Click on today's date. It's March 1st if you have to go through the archive. Remember to like, share. You got to follow, subscribe, all those different things wherever you're listening to. I started to tell you just a little bit earlier that the, you might have some trouble with the the archives if you're listening on like our iHeart Radio or iTunes or places like that. It seemed like iTunes itself was fine, but like the the web version of iTunes didn't seem to. It's got the right information, but they don't want to play. It's really frustrating. It's a technical thing that um, I I will have to take out some of my frustrations later in the show but i want to get to my guest uh, jeff martinez is a good friend of mine many many years i'd have to do the math to try and figure it out and then i'd probably be wrong because um i just aged like i said and so i'm getting older and my memory's worse and i i've come up with a million excuses to just not remember exactly when it was that we met or how long we've known each other <laughs> just we've known each other almost all of our lives certainly since we were young uh, children and and um, we have um, very similar things in common. We have different things in common, and thought it would be interesting to bring him into a conversation that you could hear, like I've done before with some of these people that I know, with my father, or with my brother, and and some interesting conversations that we've had in the past. And, but this particular one lacked anything. It's not like Jeff and I don't know each other, like my father and I don't know each other. So it was. It wasn't just. It wasn't like, oh, these guys don't know each other, and they're getting to know each other for the first time, and they're and they're related in it. They, they, it, it, that conversation lacks and Jeff and I stay connected and we're good friends and we know what's going on in each other's lives. So there's like no big surprise right there. And really we can't tell you about our past. It's not fit for radio play. I mean, there's a couple of things that are there, but so that's what I come across this, this idea that we might talk about Christianity and anarchism. And, and so we'll probably get into that. So hang out for that story, but a couple of buddies are about to catch up. Jeff, I love you, brother. How are you? Good. Can you hear me? All right. Yeah. You sound great. Okay. You sound better well, yeah. than I did a little while ago. <laughs> yeah. Just depends on the day actually. So, <laughs> and, and the time uh, man yeah, i tell you i was so. sick all this last week so i know what you mean as far as not feeling it sometimes man oh, I, it took me a while to get it all together and pull it together for this week that's a sign of you're getting older because things take longer to heal <laughs> um yeah I, you know i i've had the flu a few times in my life and i'm sure that's what that was it was the whole body thing and but it wasn't it wasn't massive or anything but i've had a couple times in my life when i when i worked in the casino i got the flu there um, mm. surprise surprise what a shock right i know right uh, around all those <laughs> those mountain casinos are lovely um anyway yeah, so i get the no. flu there and that's i mean that knocked me the hell out I was yeah. done for three days. I'm I'm like out on the couch for three days to to the point where like if I needed a drink of water and there wasn't somebody around, the wife had gone off to work, I, I would just throw myself onto the floor and roll sort of half yep. crawl over to the refrigerator and grab myself a bottle of water or soda or something like that. Or hit up the I, dog I, dish if it's close enough. Yeah, <laughs> I may have. I was it, it was a serious <laughs> state of delirium. For three days, I was sort of in and out of consciousness and reality and sleep, and 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 it's happened to me a couple of times in my life like that. That but sounds I still like won't our get thirty the plus year relationship, actually. What's that? So that sounds just like our thirty year relationship, actually. <laughs> in and out of consciousness, stumble around this and that and the other. Yeah, <laughs> that's absolutely true. We've had some <laughs> wonderful adventures, for, yeah, that's for sure. And I've, I've thought about them. Uh, I think about them all the time. I think fondly of our our mutual existence for sure. Uh, right. And and so I thought it'd be great to to catch up with you again as we do a couple of times a year, but this time in front of the the audience and just see how you're doing and and uh, how's the family relative to me. You're a new father. 
I'm a late really starter for sure. Conversation. Yeah, no doubt about it. You're how old now? You're the same age <laughs> as me or are you a year older? Uh, I think actually I might be a few months older. Like I turned 47 la- this last October. So I think you're okay. playing catch up. A few months. Yeah. yeah. Just a little bit. But you know, yeah, so I had you- my kid like three and a yeah. half years ago. Definitely a late starter. But it was kind of one of those things where I kept checking in with the wife. You know, I mean, it wasn't just me, although – you know, she's young enough that I figured, yeah, that buys me a few extra uh, years there. Um, but, yeah, we're late starters. But, honestly, I do understand why it's good to have kids when you're younger. But I also understand, you know, um, from a, a more mature level where, you know, I don't overreact to things like I would if I was in my 20s or maybe even my 30s. You know, I, I bring kind of a view where, oh, that's a kid. That's what they do. They're kind of like pets. Sometimes they poop on the floor, pee on the floor, sometimes eat things off the floor. You know, I mean, I, I bring a twisted sense of humor to, to life in general. But, yeah, you know, what? I I'm having a ball. I'm loving it. He's total daddy's boy. And um, I like to say I'm the fun one. The wife's uh, uh, the uh, authoritarian. But you know what? It's <laughs> it's the coolest thing, man. That's that's great. I mean, you were always suited to the father thing for sure. Any of the the kids that were running around in our group, and our our group is pretty extensive. Even though there's oh. only a few of us in the friend group, yeah, our families are pretty big, right? Yeah, so there's a lot of kids been running around all these years, and you always were suited to to the dad position for sure. No question about it. Uh, just like Eric, but he still doesn't have one. Yeah, well, he kids. is a big kid. Well, kind of like all of us, right? <laughs> but, oh, but we're all big kids. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah like I say, uh, what's that old adage? Uh, growing old is mandatory, but growing up is optional. I think this group of friends like Eric, uh, we definitely exemplify that. Oh, yeah. No question about it. <laughs> no, we've we've all definitely grown and matured. And it's interesting right. because we're all very different. All mm-hmm. all the four of us in that mm-hmm. that core right there are all very different Yep. Um, individuals. We've all led very different la- la- lifestyles and path lives, and but yet we're all still very much the same individuals. We have no problem you know, falling right back into um, um, who we are when we are together, um, even if we are different people separately. Yep, exactly. And that's one of those things. It's a good bad thing because we're also um, good influencers on each other. And I know that the joke was that uh, you guys always like to pull the Jedi mind trick, like, you know, in high school. Hey, Jeff, let's go to breakfast instead of, you know, first hour class. I'm like, oh, man, I can't. And you're like, come on, you want to go? And I'm like, yeah, all right, let's go. <laughs> we had to do it. We had to get you. To uh, you were the well, one you know, who was... always had a car. Some uh, well, of us that's had the cars, other thing. but you but always other... had a car. Oh, yeah. And, 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 you know, in retrospect, I totally get that. But on the flip side, that also helped me get close to you guys. We've had our fair share of adventures and everything in between. So, you know, it, it was well, kind of a means to a positive end. Cars were a bigger thing back then. It was yeah. much more important to have a car because you didn't have what we have now, Mm-mm. the ability to stay connected at great distances mm-hmm. or even just a few blocks away, whatever. Or call up a new so- or jump on a light rail or something yeah yeah and have to actually go across town or something like that or then you know your parents whiskey away off to to vegas for for a couple of years in the middle of the night one day vegas reno uh santa fe yeah Yeah. i mean it's been a little bit of hopping all over you know i mean i'm not a big traveler there's definitely people that have moved around more than myself but yeah i've been in and out a time or two well, it was interesting. My my listener knows that um, I've talked about it before. I've talked about uh, you know our trip uh, to um, Fort Leonard Missouri. Um, we've talked about um, uh, you know the the fact that we all went to high school together, and that that um, you you went away for a period of time and then came back, and how you know you fit right back into the group. How how nothing had changed along those lines again. Mm-hmm. So, and I had I had a friend uh, a friend from one of my um, you know Bible study classes one time ask me you know what uh, what makes a good friend and I really had to stop and think about it because I guess I was spoiled and I had what I considered were good friends um, but one of the things I would always say is like no matter how far apart you are distance wise or or just even life wise you know getting in the way and stuff like that a good friend is somebody that you can see or talk to. And you pick right up where you left off. Like, you know, you might have little disagreements, arguments, whatever. 
Um, but that stuff blows over, you know, because the value is is in that relationship. And, um, you know, it like they say, the world would be boring if we were all the same, you know. So, um, Wait, yeah. Do you find I that it's harder are... or that it's even impossible to create relationships like that later I... on in life? Is there, is it... there something about growing up together in a shared existence mm-hmm. that solidifies that that's harder to ever find again, you think? I, I think it's not impossible, but I think it's harder to find just like you mentioned, like the connected world, you know, there it's like there's a lot of fronting going on through Twitter, Facebook, you know, at least when we grew up that we spent time, we would walk down train tracks together and, you know, whatever, like I said, we'd go on our adventures together and we built moments together. Whereas now everything Trash. is like a, a clip of, you know, a soundbite or a, a, a meme or, you know, something like that. That interaction, those, they don't go as deep in. It almost seems like we're constantly marketing ourselves. So it's like you're not really getting to know somebody. Now, with that said, there are still quite a few people out there that you can connect with, you know, and, and find commonalities. Um, but you got to it, it takes longer to develop those relationships because you might only be able to sit down and have a couple beers with somebody or a few hours, you know, at a ball game or something like that. So I think it's doable, uh, but it, it has to be intentional more than I think before where it, it seems to just it, happen. isn't it? Yeah, it's all about the intention. Uh, it was it was easy as as children because of proximity, the fact that we had to go to school together, things like that. Yeah. We were always forced to be together in that sense. It's a little bit easier to develop that that knowledge and understanding of each other. But as you get older, you actually have to go out of your way. You have to take time away from family. You have to take time away from jobs and the, uh, if any other thing that you might do to to try to cultivate a, a, a deep relationship like that. Oh, well, absolutely. And, um, you know, it, it gets hard with life. I mean, I know that you as a family man yourself, you know, that sometimes you got to do things with the, the kids and family and not that it's a chore or anything, but that's your priority. And then sometimes, you know, self care is uh, secondary. So yeah, you have to really try to work all these things in and plan it out. And I'm learning, um, with school and things like that, that or not school, sorry, but work and things like that, you really have to intentionally plan out a time to take care of your family, a time to take care of yourself, a time to work, you know, things like that. The things that are important, if you make them a priority, you find a way. You know, like me, I'm a gadget guy and music and whatever. Um, So if there's something I really want, but, you know, um, might not have full funds, I I somehow find a way, (laughs) you know, to make (laughs) things happen that I want to happen. So I well, think that's that's, our, that's that wheeling and dealing blood that we all have. Oh, that's one yes. thing that we all were lucky to grow up with, and oh, yeah. and the fact that we had uh, uh, the uh, the flea market there in mm-hmm. in the background of our youth, and and the, one of the largest flea outdoor flea markets in the world. So it was an interesting education that we got there as well. Yeah, and I guess maybe people that don't have that don't understand it, but you're right. Like I am probably one of the least. Uh, wheeler dealer types people but on the flip side i ain't afraid to open my mouth and say okay you're asking right. this much. um how about i give you this much and then you kind of start the haggle process and until you meet in the middle or you you walk away you know you, a lot of people every- don't and then they're dissatisfied or they won't get the things that they want they won't mm-hmm. splurge to buy the things that make them happy or, or that they find fancy or fun or interesting uh, because they have social pressures or they have this idea that um, uh, they have to meet some standard, somebody else's idea. It's like you're talking about everything's in a soundbite. Well, so is their reality in spending money. It has to be a social statement or something now. And you have to be able to say, oh, well, I have a 70 inch TV now, or uh, yeah, I got the new Xbox, or, or on the flip side of that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, right. Why do you have an Xbox? What do you what do you do with your time? Don't you have better things to do with your time? Isn't your time more important than that? Yeah. And I think that's kind of where, where it ties into kind of our commonalities where like, you know, you're you're. I don't want to say pushing, but you're involved in the anarchist movement. Right. Um, right. But it is about freedom. It's about like saying, hey, you know what? I'm into vintage audio equipment. Somebody might say, hey, you know what? You know, I've got a phone that plays everything CD quality, this and that. But I'm like, yeah, I like pushing the buttons and the sliders, seeing the lights, hearing an occasional pop in the music or, you know, rewinding a tape or something, you know. And then just the the experience that I get, you know, I feel more involved with the music. And I, you know, I do think that with the right setup, you know, um, analog can sound 
I don't want to say better, but there is a different experience than just pure digital music. So, yeah, well, that's, so somebody might say, why do the... you want to do that? And, you know, I'm like, well, that's because that, that's what I meant. Right. It's your thing. It, it's it's something that I have a, a hard time with because it, it comes from all angles. It comes from people in my movement in in the anarchist movement or it comes from people on the outside. And this this idea that my time, that your time, that somebody else's time should be spent doing what other people imagine they should be doing. <laughs> and it's just to me especially coming from somebody that's on sort of my side of the fence, whatever, this anarchist movement, um, volunteerism, how is it that you can ever, ever waste your time questioning what someone else does voluntarily? And that brings us to the, the question of, of Christianity and, and anarchism. Uh, we're getting ready. We're getting really close to a break. And then we're okay. going to have a, a really short segment sure. where I'm just going to I'm going to sell some stuff. and We'll chat a little sure. bit, but then we'll come back after the top of the hour. And, and, and we'll try to do this this conversation just a little bit in terms of our uh, our own reality. You and I sure. have always had. Um, Phil- good, philosophical connection. Yeah, re- good conversations. We're not the type of people to get together and necessarily go. Uh, remember when we had that great day? That's not our thing. Our conversations are in the here and now. So we're going to have that conversation about anarchy and Christianity when we get back on toward anarchy. Stick around. We right now we're not doing this thing across Skype with the video like we like we did last week, which worked out really well. But I haven't posted the video yet because it was down because of just under the weather. But um, uh, we can't see each other. But I can just imagine that Jeff was enjoying that music because that's another thing that we share in common. My guest, Jeff Martinez, a uh, good longtime friend. That's uh, we're all musically inclined. All four of us. Um, we've all played in bands together over the years, off and on from jazz bands and marching bands in school, all the way up through, uh, rock and metal bands. Um, and we even, even for a little while, we we're playing around with, um, um, trying to start a jazz band when we were in our thirties uh, there for, <laughs> that didn't last very long. I think it was more about just hanging out, but, uh, I think it yeah, was. Some of my, my best memories were ditching bands. So, Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and we had such an amazing teacher. We had an amazing That's, arrangement, yeah. array of teachers over the years in music, we did. didn't we? And we gave them all a run for their money, for sure. Oh, God. But they loved <laughs> us more than anybody else in the class, though, too. Oh, yeah. Every well, as time. an illustration, I, what we ditched for like the first six months of our freshman year. And then once we got busted, <laughs> uh, well, I was getting a B average at that point. Then once we got busted and had to go to class, I think I got like a D average through the rest of the semester. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, they loved us. Oh, my. I can just remember coming back from from lunch sometimes, either high as a kite or, or literally tripping on acid a couple of times. I don't know if you did that with us or not. I think I actually only did a, once. Yeah, it was in a Did big, you once? Yeah, yeah it was, was in a big time. tripper. Yeah. Yeah. That, <laughs> that, was, that was quite the day in that because that was one of those times when everybody, it seemed like everybody was doing it, right? It wasn't just or trying us. It. Well, they, tried, was, they were all too, trying it for the first time. Yeah. Like a lot of people hated <laughs> high school, but I loved it because even people outside of our social group, we still had a lot of friends or history from middle school and grade school that were still in class with us. So, you know, there was that one friend of ours or mutual acquaintance that uh, mm-hmm. she's sitting in class. Who knows? Maybe it was the same day hanging out with you guys. She was tripping, saw the letters running off her page, started laughing, flipped over on her desk, and then she just crossed her arms and legs like nothing happened. You know, I mean, that was going all over the school when that happened. Oh, I Janet. Just, I, yep, yep, yep. Yep. Wow, what a day. But, but that's that was... the thing, right? Like we were all connected in, yeah, you still had some fights and stuff, but that's back when you could have a disagreement with somebody and duke it out but then you either stayed away from each other or you were cool with each other you know none of this now you're a an aggressive person and it's in your you know record or you're this and that and you know yeah the times are oh. different you know yeah oh god we could go we could go on and on about the changes that from oh, school yeah. you know that that janice is uh, is working in in the public mm-hmm. education system now after all these years and it's it's as bad and worse as you can imagine. But then in other places, it's better and amazing. And it's just weird. There was one thing that I noticed. This was something I was going to say. This was sort of listening to Republic Broadcasting Network. We are living in an artificially induced state of consciousness that resembles sleep. The poor 
and the underclass are growing. Racial justice and human rights are non-existent. We have been lulled into a trance. They have made us indifferent to ourselves, to others. We are focused only on our own game. That is their primary method of survival. Keep us asleep. So if you go to TowardAnarchy.com, today's date is March 1st, and you will see that my guest is Jeff Martinez. He's a lifelong friend, and uh, he's a man of faith, and it occurred to me that maybe we could talk a little bit about anarchy and Christianity just because we are both well-versed on, on the conversation, the, 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 the topics anyway, and that we could have that conversation because we always seem to, when we get together, we'll do a lunch or something like that. Uh, we get together, we have conversations, and we don't sit around and reminisce about baseball, you know, the good old days, which the uh, uh, the boss, the uh, Bruce Springsteen song. <laughs> that's what they do. They sit around and... Glory and, days. Uh, yeah, glory days. That's it. Yeah, ruminate about baseball. And uh, But uh, we, did, we didn't do that so much. And not that there's anything wrong with that. I re- one of our greatest adventures, um, <laughs> see if you remember this, Jeff. You remember the day we went to see uh, Blue Saraceno? Yep. Yep, yep. <laughs> and so um, we're headed down to Rockley Music on uh, Colfax in, in Denver. And uh, the boys all show up, Eric and Jeff and, and Dwayne, uh, the four of us. They show up at my place to, to pick us up, to pick me up, to head on down there. And it's a guitar clinic. We're actually going for this sort of small audience, one-on-one kind of thing where we get to watch him really play and, and uh, show us his style and stuff like that. And, and so it was a really big deal for all of us, all being musicians, Eric being a guitarist, and, and the rest of us you know, wishing we were guitarists. Right. Um, <laughs> right? <laughs> and and uh, so we uh, they show up to pick me up. Everybody comes inside for some reason. I, I, there's not necessarily any reason because we weren't hanging around. We were we were off. We were going to go, but um, we all um, we jump back in the car. And before you can turn the key, um, there's guns pointing in the windows, mm-hmm. and we're surrounded by Commerce City cops. <laughs> Dude, yeah. just our luck, too, man. And I mean, all we could do is be cool, you know. And that was the good thing. We uh, one of the commonalities I think all of us is we knew how to be cool, right, in the face of stuff going on around us and like everything else all right put our hands up whatever they do their thing and you know on and on and on blah 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 but yeah that was a trip for sure something i never forgot well hey we we got to go to see blue saraceno i got his signature and we get to hang out again but yeah that was that was a crazy wild day right there i mean that and that's it's just one little adventure. There have been many others. <laughs> I swear, we've we got to get together and write our own movie or something, man, because the things that we've seen, done, everything, it, people wouldn't believe it. it. It would make a great comedy. Oh, yeah, for make, sure. No doubt about it. We're all, we're all funny, interesting people and always have been, and we're all outgoing outspoken and that and that's something that a lot of people are not and that a lot of people appreciate <laughs> and a lot of more people don't appreciate especially when you tell them you know the things that they don't want to hear like the truth so so you're a christian you're you're yeah. catholic actually right well no, no actually um i was very seventh day adventist my mom was catholic oh, really? my okay. dad's side his mom was a little bit of everything trying to kind of hop around and find you know what resonated with her um, with my mom, she she was like, "Why is this God that's supposed to be gracious and forgiving also going to damn me to hell to burn forever and things like that?" It just didn't click with her. So, um, you know, I'll try to keep it brief, but oh, no. famous last words. But um, <laughs> it was one of those things where uh, my one of my uncles saw that there was this you know Seventh Day Adventist Church having kind of a end of days sermon with the Bible's talking about and all that going on. So they all started going, and they actually liked that it was a very um, practical, um, Bible-driven, not some guy telling me with fire and brimstone what he thinks or anything like that. It was just pointing to Scripture. But they also told him, find out for yourself, right? Don't be spoon-fed. And the Bible talks about that as well. Don't just sit there and have some guy in a pulpit or somewhere telling you what to do. Find out for yourself and kind of get back to your comment about the truth. I That's what it, everything should boil down to but again i think you and me and our group of friends are different in that we don't take word word for it we don't even take each other's word for it sometimes and we've had plenty of back and forth 
between you and me or Dwayne and, you know, I mean, on and on about it. But that's but that's how it should be. Right. You should be open to hearing somebody's uh, viewpoint, not being afraid to maybe stand up for your own viewpoint. But then at the end of the day, saying, you know what, that is my personal right or that is my, you know, God given right to be able to express my opinion. But it doesn't mean I have to hate anybody that opposes it or this and that and the other. You know, and that's kind of like what my family uh, really resonated with that. Uh, I will say I know current administration has somebody who's, you know, grew up that way as well. And I will say I don't support his same viewpoints. Um, (laughs) But again, you know, I've learned um, even by hanging out with you guys, question things. Don't don't just take it at face value, but also don't hold it against somebody, because like you say, we all have the right to exist in in finding ways to do that, Um, you know. I think society's off much better off when you um, learn to accept and appreciate each other's differences, but also don't impose your own on somebody else. If they like what they hear and they want to hang out with you, great. Same thing on the flip side, but you know, I shouldn't be forced to do something. Well, and that's the conversation there, isn't it? It's about this voluntary interaction. And that was, that was what I thought would be great about the conversation about anarchism and, and Christianity because I had to reconcile that notion myself with, you know, somebody coming to me and saying, well, I'm an anarchist and I'm a Christian. And you get the idea all along with the no rulers thing. A lot of times they attach no gods, no gods, no masters to that. And, and to me, that's a little bit silly, whether you believe in a God or not, because the reality of the church is the reality of these organizations, whether you find any value in a specific one or not. Um, or in them in general, is that they are voluntary community. That people come together uh, to to worship and share with each other, and they and it's not forced. There's nothing forced about it. And for me, oh, yeah. that's the beginning and ending of all of these conversations that I have. I tell people, you know, voluntarism, anarchy. These are not things that need to be studied. These are things that need to be practiced. And that's in very simply letting other people be who they want to be. Right. And that's, you know, a great example is both. I mean, there's some parts that I don't know if they intersect per se is worse as, you know, uh, religion and anarchism, but they at least bump up very close. Right. And that's a good point. It's like, I don't go to church because I have to, I don't believe in God because I have to, I have my own, you know, reality where it says, you know what, I've seen his works in my life and I follow him because I want to because it makes me fulfilled. It helps fill a need for me in a way that I don't see other things out there in the world doing. And you know what? If it's teaching me how to be a good person and how to, you know, guard my my heart from what I say and do and what I hear and what I'm around, you know, if it, it's making me be a better person and, and that's my thing, that's, you know, I, it, it, to me, it's not a bad thing. If I'm wrong, hey, you know what? At least I still was, uh, you know, hopefully kept out of jail you know i mean life still ain't over yet but but, you know um in the end days let's say we're persecuted and that kind of touches on with like anarchism right like i shouldn't be forced to follow one religion i shouldn't be forced to follow certain things that a, a ruling authority tells me now as you mentioned before you know like with um you know you 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 carry you know you shouldn't have somebody tell you you can't carry but there's also a responsibility, you know, kind of that whole thing with great power comes great responsibility. You know, just because you carry a firearm, you're not going to go nuts and go out there and, you know, blast and away at a ton of people or various things like that. You know that it's for personal protection and you want to give yourself the advantage to uh, survive should you're ever faced with a life-threatening situation, you know. And um, you know, I think religion... Like I say, this is a very, uh, as you always know, sticky situation because some people point to, you know, um, I guess contradictions in the Bible and things like that. But I think when you take it as a whole you under and you understand the Bible and, you know, what's going on with Christianity from its inception in the Old Testament to how things change in the New Testament, on and on. You know, you got to take them as a whole and understand what it's saying. But, you know, as far as leaders, you know, in general, there are passages that say, you know, uh, you know follow your leaders, this and that. But further in the passage, and I swear I had one pulled up. I might not be able to find it now because I want to. But but of what course. it's saying is if your leaders are um, 
honest and they're being you know truthful and they're not abusing their power that's one thing but when you have leaders that are being evil and trying to impose their will and rule for their own purposes and not um, uh, allowing others to you know live their lives you know in a fruitful positive way that's when it's you know dangerous and negative you know um and that's no, of... I appreciate that you put it in your own words like that. I think that's better than actually finding the, the Bible verse because it, it means it tells me it, and it, I would hope that it would tell anybody who's listening that you understood it. Yeah, <laughs> right. Right. Well, if you can you teach it, it. Yeah, if you could teach it, you know, uh, but exactly. But that's kind of like, you know, uh, getting back to certain things, you know, uh, they say our nation is a nation of laws. Well, yeah, it's laws, but. Are they fairly applied? Are they even valid laws and stuff like that? So I think everything has to be looked in the proper context. And, you know, with the current election cycle coming up, you know, people have, you know, obviously are divided in this and that and the other about what's going on. But everybody talks about, oh, you know, let's tax the rich to death. Well, why? What's the incentive then for anybody to go out and be motivated to do anything then? Sure, they yeah. should, you know, if you're Amazon, you should not be paying zero in taxes every year. When I'm supporting you by using your goods and services, you know, you should be paying your fair share. I certainly pay my fair share. You know, mm-hmm. um, if we if everyone if I have to pay, everyone has to pay. <laughs> it, it, right. No, it's absolutely well, it's a fair argument. And, and here's the reason why, because it goes deeper than that, because people will try to scratch that that argument on the surface and say, well, it's not it's not valid, but it is valid because there's a deeper conversation underneath the way our economy and the way um, taxation was supposed to be set up and who was supposed to pay the bills. The idea was is that we, the people out here, this is our land. We could use mm-hmm. it any way we wanted to. And Absolutely. that we allowed corporations and we allowed government to to conduct business within and with on our property. That's the way it was originally framed. Just because it's upside down now doesn't mean that it wasn't supposed to work that way (laughs) no and i agree completely because um my take on it is it's kind of one of those things right you let you let the fox in the hen house it's hard to get them out and so you let you know special interest groups you let you know all these other things infiltrate our political system and it is no longer our political system it's a corporate political system for whoever has the most money can you know direct things the way they want and um it's just hard, you know, I, I, I struggle with, you know, who to vote for, like many people do, because at yeah. the end of the day, they're both playing the same game. It's just from different sides of the coin, you know, a different angle. So, you know, you got to kind of take those things in consideration when you're trying to figure out who to vote for or, you know, maybe not, you know, but um, I, I prefer and to obviously vote. Obviously, your religion plays makes a, a, a some sort of statement in it because yeah. you have a man in office, as you said, that claims that he is a religious man, but that you personally don't support the the mm-hmm. things that he cl- that he does. I mean, it, no, he doesn't says it doesn't point yeah. to what I know. The Bible says a, a Christian should um, carry themselves. You know, right. um, you know, there's a passage that says, you know, what comes out of your mouth is a reflection of your heart, and. I, I will say, being, just because I'm Christian doesn't mean I'm without my faults or anything, because, again, Bible says it's not the people that are well that seek help. It's the people that are sick that need help that seek help, you know. And and, I, and like you say, we've known each other forever. You've you've definitely seen my less than Christian um, actions and attitudes, uh, you know. Uh, but that's the point, you know, uh, for me. It's I know that I've done those things, but I can be better because, um, you know, my faith <laughs> helps guide me. Not that I'm perfect. He's going to get you no matter what. Me, <laughs> yeah. My wife will tell you I screw up more than I probably even think I do, you know. And, and my kid, he's going to have a therapy fund, not a college fund, because I know that will serve him. <laughs> so, you know, I'm going to say I ain't, I ain't perfect and, and all that. But for me, that's where Christianity helps me. Um not pigeonhole myself or, or stay in a rut to where I feel trapped in anything. And, and that's kind of like with our political systems and, and other organizations that try to tell us what to do. We should have those personal freedoms. But if we're lead, leading a life that's positive and, and you know, constructive and, and, you know, we, the circles we travel in, we take, you know, take care of our own or, or even others, you know, we let others do their thing. But again, don't push your 
viewpoints on me. Let me, you know, present them. We can talk about it. Fine. If I find something interesting, I'll dig in. If not, you know, well, then, you know, at least we had that exchange. And I know that there's another viewpoint out there. And that's the only that's the only fair way to approach any of these things. It's really it's it, there's so many dishonest ways to have a conversation. That's and there's only that's one that's honest way to have a conversation. That's and that's approaching everything from a, from that open mind. And I was watching uh, Graham Hancock. I don't know if you know who that is. Um, but um, and um, um, uh, Michael um, uh, Sherman, Sherman, I don't know. He's the. He, the head of the skeptics magazine or something like that. It, it, it would be something that normally you would expect. I would be like right on top of, Ooh, I love these skeptic guys. And I really don't because they don't have honest conversations. Um, and if you, if you knew about Graham Hancock, he's uh, he, um, he has theories about the age and development of, of humanity and, and how we traveled to America and different things like that. It's just a, uh, he, he has a different understanding of mainstream archaeology, of the pyramids and things like that. And, uh, but unfairly, he's constantly mischaracterized. And I mm-hmm. think that oftentimes happens with, with both religion, and I think it oftentimes happens with, with anarchy as well. Mm-hmm. And I think that I agree. Sometimes they're really both like dirty words sometimes until you really talk to somebody and, and really understand where they're coming from, you know? Um, well, I, you know, I was raised in the Christian tradition. I've been, mm-hmm. you know, by the time I was sort of 15, 16 years old, I had been through, uh, you know, all, all, all let's see, Baptist, uh, Methodist, See, that sounds like my dad's and, side of the family, yo. Right. We we did the rounds. We made it through. And we went from the small country type of church there, you know, the small little white one one room church there in, in Commerce City, all the way up to the, the big, you know, Mega fancy churches, 1800 mm-hmm. church, you know, downtown on the corner. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. And and so we tried everything and everything in between. And and, and the commonality was uh, was, you know, biblical teaching. Um, there was differences in, in the social aspects of it, but in the reality, in the end, I think one thing that was really interesting that's happened in our time, I think, is that it, religion has changed in how it um, in how it attracts people. It, it, it presents itself as as normal. I don't want to say that it's not normal, but it presents itself more normally and mainstream than it ever did when we were, were you, I mean, it started yeah. happening in our time, I think. I mean, it's kind of one of those good, bad things, right? Like before, like in, in growing up and, and maybe be, knowing that, you know, I'm not as good as what, you know, when you think of a Christian, you know, sometimes you think, oh, that holier than thou, mm. prim proper, you know, stoic attitudes, this and that. I'm like, that was so not me. Like I say, we've had our wild times, but on the flip side, I think it also helped guide me and, and personally some of the stuff we got out of, <laughs> I'm like, good Lord must've been having his uh, garden angels working overtime on that one. But, but you're right. <laughs> there was a time when I didn't feel confident in telling people that I was a man of faith, you know, um, because everybody, that means something different to everybody. Just like if you, you know, you say, Hey, I'm an anarchist or I empathize with anarchists, mm-hmm. you know, people that don't really understand it and, and, have explored that in a responsible way will not get it. Well, and especially strangers. And so many, yeah. so many of us are talking to strangers now. Uh, yes. you, you hit on the, the social media and the things that are going on there. And it's something that I talk about a lot here because I use the tools and I, I request that the people that are listening use the tools, of course, and to share them. But then I, I try to get them to understand them. And I try to not, I try to get them to, understand that they uh, like like guns like cars like spoons that these are tools that are yeah. used and that if you're using them improperly it's you using them improperly if yes. you're getting angry and saying things that you shouldn't say or wouldn't otherwise say on the internet if you're doing treating people like you wouldn't treat somebody in person on the internet that's you that's not what? the tool you're using you may be the tool, but in a different respect. 
<laughs> that's absolutely true, man. This has been really great. I know we're getting, oh yeah, we're yeah. getting close up here on on one of these short breaks, and I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you the the game. We got to play a game of uh, um, um, word association. All right, here comes my my social anxiety a little bit, but all right, let's go. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know, like, <laughs> because I don't know how often you think about these things, That's but true. I know that you're a well-thought-out man, so cool. I think they value. So when we get back from the break, Jeff, you've got to figure it out by just listening and figuring out your own way instead of somebody else's way. That's that's the way. I've been having this fantastic conversation with my buddy Jeff Martinez. Go to TowardAnarchy.com. It's March 1st. That's the date you're looking for. And as always, you can follow along there. And, and unfortunately, our time is is almost up here. But that means that we get to have a little bit of fun and play some word association. So I'm going to ask Jeff the same questions I ask all my anarchist friends. <laughs> and so uh, they're real simple. It's just one word questions and, uh, and just word association, whatever comes to mind, just an honest answer, whatever you think when I say the word. So the first word is, is voting. Are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah, I, I hear you. Oh. There you go. <laughs> I was just saying respon- responsible or responsibility. Respons- like? Okay, that's interesting. That, that's a that's a long conversation right there mm-hmm. because there's some truth to it. It depends on your point of view, and and that's what's interesting about these that's words and the way I ask them and and what I'm I don't know the, the the ideas that I'm forming behind them is try to get everybody's different perspective of these things to find the commonality to find you know <laughs> mm-hmm. somewhere in there between the people who you know I might call statist and the people who are anarchists and non-voters and things like that somewhere in there there has to be moral and reasonable and legal and uh vocabulary grounds on which to stand <laughs> Oh, yeah. Like you say, I mean, everything, you know, kind of has a uh, at least when I, I look at things, there's more to it than, than just on the surface. It, it is. It's more simple than word association. And and that's sort of the, the game in doing this is to, to whether people have thought about it. And, and a word like that, a response like that tells me that you have thought about it a little bit. Um, so. All right. So let's continue right. with the rest of them, though, so we don't yeah. get bogged down in it because we could do it all day long. Right. <laughs> just, I know. It's easy to talk to you. Um, free market. Oh my. Opportunity. Oh, that's beautiful. How about borders? Uh, borders. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. trying to get into knee jerk. His I don't really have a name is that, Martinez. Honestly. Let me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but that that but, also can be uh, a, a hidden meaning in itself and not apparent. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. well, let me ask um, you the next word, yeah. and, and and let me you can maybe you can make your decision. Property. Okay. So that's Property. separate from borders. Right, like my right. Oh, okay, okay. I got you. I didn't. I didn't hear it. I thought you yeah. said that you were confirming. Right. That's no. A right. Oh, oh okay. sorry. Yeah, yeah. Like my right. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, got I, you. I guess okay. I'm trying yeah. to keep it to a one word response. I guess I can keep. Oh it no! Response. Don't don't feel. Oh. Uh, yeah. I tried to do that before. I tried to get the one word response, and it just it it just it's not. It's natural. not enough. <laughs> Yeah, it really isn't. We don't necessarily have to go, you know, into okay. a deeper conversation on each one. We can't. We're almost out of time. But, I know. Right. Uh, there's no reason to limit ourselves to the one okay. word. That's what I found. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So, how about money? Where, Trade. Where's my dad? Trade. And by by that I mean like uh, you have to have a system of barter. Maybe barter is what yeah. I should. Yeah. Well, no. You're you're probably right. This is probably one of those things, and, and it's this longer conversation that we have on the show all the time. It's it's one of those things that you don't necessarily think about because it's a tool. You just use it. But then yeah. th- that's how you have to think about it. It is a tool. Money is just a tool, and it's in how you use it. That's where the power really is. Mm-hmm. And and who controls it? That's the other the right. conversation, of course. And how about this one? This one's always tricky um, for law-abiding citizens. Um, the police. <laughs> black or white and by by that mm. i mean again you know it's it's not a racial thing it's more mm. of again they're tools to be used and sometimes they're used for good but a lot of times they're not used for good maybe i need to change that question and maybe i need yeah. to ask people and get them to think about this when they leave and instead of asking police maybe i should ask policing to get them to think about what it is that police do as opposed to seeing 
um, the uniform and the badge and the authority and all that. No, I think that would be a good one because, yeah, I was thinking like the individual. Uh, it's, and it, that's that a big serving. thing that I run up against. And, and I, I always try. I, I want people to understand that I don't have anything against individuals. I have a problem with policing. So just because you policing. know your yeah. dad or somebody like that is a, a police officer, understand that I'm I'm not speaking about him so much as I'm speaking about his job. We can talk about his morality and, and his understanding of what his job is in, a, in the deeper, longer conversation. Oh, yeah. But my initial conversation is not me <laughs> telling you that that cop that you know is a bad guy per se. Yeah, no, and you're exactly right. I think it's 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 how they're used by the powers that be that Absolutely. again goes to policing. It's tools. It's to, it, it's all about tools, and all these things are tools. And then I guess that's the reason I have this conversation because this is a show about anarchy, and people think that when the conversation is about anarchy, that anarchy answers all those questions. It doesn't. Right. Yeah, don't say hello. No, I think it definitely is a flashlight on maybe oh, it best. things that. Uh, people don't normally get brought to their attention because of, you know, the mainstream media and things like that. You know, I do right. believe that they're just, they're just selling time in between commercials. So they yeah. sensationalize and dramatize things. I think it's proven over and over again. I, I don't think there's any question that it's for them. It may be once a long time ago. Listen, brother, it's been great. I got to go. I Always will catch up with you a little bit later. All right. Sounds good. Man. We'll talk to you later. Thank you. Take care. We'll be right back on Toward Anarchy. I don't know if I've been good enough about making it clear. Uh, you know, is that is that something that you understand when I talk about police? That that I that I don't mean individuals. That I'm talking about what they do. We can have the deeper, longer conversation about the morality and their understanding of what they do. But I'm going to come down on the side initially that they that in a lot of cases, they don't really understand that they are like most people, that they have been raised within this system and that they've been programmed by birth to accept authority. That they don't question it. I, I I told you about this before. I, my my good friend and mentor uh, Ken Riggs he used to drive around the city of Denver all the time with a uh, a bumper sticker on the back of his Lincoln, big old beautiful Lincoln, um, and and it's a question of authority. And of course, that's the statement out of the Nuremberg trials, right? The, the, you, the, we were doing what we were told. Well, that's not an excuse. You need to question authority. And um, I remember the Denver police pulling him over and telling him that uh, he needed to take that off his car because gangs <laughs> had uh, um, uh, acquired that that terminology, that question of authority thing, the anarchist gangs in question. And, and that cop just did not understand what it meant at all to question authority. And, 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 and I, I believe that that's the case, that the police don't understand. Why would they? Most people don't. It takes, I'm not, I, God, I wish I knew what it was. I wish there was just one thing that I could point to and go, wow, that's what made me. But there's not. Even though I was who I am now a long, long time ago, as you can tell from the conversations that I have with my friends, and there are more of them coming up because they they go so well that was an amazing conversation i don't know what i mean <laughs> i don't know what you were listening to but i was listening to that conversation and i was having a great time uh, <laughs> and and the so it, it just sh it just says that i am who i think i am and i've always been who i think i am and so i don't know what that is there's some biology there's some uh, rearing in there I've been raised to be this person that I am, and I was raised without a father figure for most of my youth. Um, and the one that did come along wasn't real great. Um, you know, there's all of these different things in there that that could be a little bit of little bitty factors or anything. But the, the reality is, that it's just me. It's what I've read. Um, what I've watched, what I've seen, what I believe. And and I'll be honest that it has to be based in that Christian uh, sense of morality because I was raised in that. In that. But, 
you know, how far does that go? Again, you you take what you need out of it and what what makes it work for you because it, it's for you. It's not for anyone else. It, it's about you. It's about personal. And, and I will continue to say this until I'm blue in the face that it doesn't matter that, that whatever you're doing, you're probably okay. There's probably nothing wrong with you if you're not hurting other people or damaging their property. And, and if you're doing those things knowingly, you, there's something wrong with you. You're scum. And I think that what we find in the political arena, a lot of times is, is that they really are doing this knowingly. Certainly, the higher up you go, there has to be some knowledge that what they're doing doesn't work, that there's other ways to do things. And that a lot of times they just go along to get along with the real, realization that the, that the rest of us come to on our own is that there's not a lot that we as individuals can do about the greater picture. And so hopefully we get to work on us. And and unfortunately, I think that there's this chain of events that happens where I, th- I think history bears this out where freedom becomes chaos because it's twisted by uh, individuals and small groups. And then those, okay, we'll call it anarchy. Anarchy becomes chaos. And then, because because of the manipulation, because of legal manipulations, this is the thing that I try to get across to people and try to get, think about this, understand this. They talk about the warlord thing. Oh, anarchy. What about all the warlords? What about the factioning and fractionalization? What about it? It's going on now. It already exists. It's already there. They're already warlords. You got a warlord in every uh, capital building in every state in the union. And then there's a warlord on top of him, and then he's got a bunch of many little warlords underneath him. And they're all – because they're all self-appointed and self-anointed, not any one of us individually chose those people. And so not any one of us individually should have to suffer them. You know, There's no more right for 51 people to tell 49 people what to do than it is for 99 people to tell one person what to do. That's the reality of the the anarchy, the the voluntarism, the the society that I want to live in. I'm willing to take that chance. I'm willing to take the chance that you're armed and he's armed and she's armed and they're armed as long as I get to be too. And nobody else gets to dictate to me that I can't be. So I'm not your enemy. I'm not looking for a utopian society. I'm not looking for chaos where warlords take control. That's not what anarchy is about. And those aren't the questions that anarchy answers. The only question that anarchy answers is the is voluntary cooperation within a ruling uh, class is is when I walk onto your property, which you claim to be your state, your whatever it is, if you're that big, your nation, if you're the nation of America and all its little states, when I'm on your property, is my cooperation with your political system uh, and your police and your laws voluntary as long as I'm not hurting someone or their property? Because that's my morality. That's my moral basis is that there's nothing. Everything under the sun is open to you uh, to do as long as those that you do it with do so voluntarily. That, it's just really not that hard. And we do it every single day, every single second of every single day. That conscientious, that conscious effort to create and do what we do and be who we are without consideration of, of authority. That's it. And and if Christianity is a thing for you, if that makes you a better person, if that gives you a, a center, if that gives you a community, do it. I don't care. I don't care. Just don't force it on me. That, uh, that's all I ask about any of this stuff. Don't force me to see the world your way and to participate in the world your way and with your tools as long as I'm not hurting you. Uh, and I'm not uh, interfering with your way to do those same things. And I don't. I don't ever. I had to reconcile this a long time ago. I've talked about how it's a, a very personal, painful experience to um, to make people sad about being who they are. 
for whatever reason, whether it's their religion or their their self-image or the things they believe or the things they say that they do, they do voluntarily and with other people, whatever it is, to make somebody feel bad about who they are uh, when they're not uh, hurting anybody else doing what they do is is terrible. It's a horrible, horrible thing, and you should never have to feel that burden on yourself. And it's real simple to do by just not judging other people by your standards when it comes to things like that. Whatever it is, it's anything. It's anything when it comes to their voluntarily doing it in association. I want to talk. Uh, go to TowardAnarchy.com. Let's, you know, let's do a couple of things like this and talk about a couple of these things because it's important. You have to share. You have to like it, and you have to follow along, and you have to – um, subscribe. You have to do all of those things. I talked a little bit earlier in the show. I apologize for the audio quality. It was all my fault, and I have no doubt about it. Um, it, it wasn't terrible, I guess, but it wasn't great. Uh, it sounded like I was a little far away for a little while there, but it got it fixed up. But I, I was talking about how there might be some problems with some of the archive stuff. If you go to TowardAnarchy.com, there is no problem with the archive. If you go to the Republic Broadcasting website, there is no problem with the archive. So you can listen to those all day long, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, no problem. Uh, but I was playing with it. It's frustrating. This is what I started to talk about. I was just hit on this for just a little bit because – I, I deal with this a lot. As a technologically smart guy, it frustrates me when technology doesn't work because I understand how it works. And I understand that most of the errors are um, for reasons that have nothing to do with with any objective view of how the stuff functions. It's all, it's all some engineers, some uh, – user interface developers idea of the way people should do it there's no and and it, of course it would be that's the way it is but it's very frustrating when it's something simple when something happens to me like this that uh, i've gone through it with pandora with them uh, uh, ignoring that my files work with every other streamer with every other with itunes with iHeartRadio, with stitcher with tune in with Breaker with with Spotify with all of these places it works and you're going to tell me that it doesn't work with you no I'm sorry but you suck Pandora and that's the reality of it and your your technical service sucks because there's no way that I can have these th these technologies working like that. you can see how I get a little bit upset about this because it's not right there's no way I'm the first person to do it there's some kind of gatekeeping going on that might have to do with the fact that there's anarchy in the name of the website that's serving up the file? I don't know. I can't get past them. I, I can't get past and, it, and it's not worth my effort to do it. That's the reality of it. I don't care if they don't have my, my stuff on their platform. Uh, I have my stuff on my platform. Everybody else gets it as a courtesy. That's the way it works. And thankfully, I have a network to send it out over. <laughs> Thanks to Ken and John and everybody, Kevin, all these people that uh, make stuff happen to the network that I can't even begin to name them all. That's the reality of that. No, it, it's, so it, it's, a, it's really important that right now, if you're having to deal with something, if you do listen on Spotify or something like that, and you, and you come across a file that's messed up, I'm figuring it out on this end, even though I shouldn't have to, even though it's functioning in, in different places. Like if you go to iTunes proper, if you pull up the iTunes app, there's no problem listening to the files. They work perfectly. But in other places, they're not. And, and, it's, and it's even more frustrating because you can, in those places that they're not working, I look right at it and go, it's got the information that is associated with the current file. How is it possibly not working? And there's no reason for it. What is the point of me hosting a file that has this information on my server that contains all the links that point and all the data for each a file to you know the name of the uh show the date and and the uh, picture for the uh, uh to, for toward anarchy and all, all this stuff is there and it's all showing up and it's all perfect but you're not playing the file the actual file that it points to everything else is correct but the file is not and i have 
the 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 file on my server that you're getting that information from how is that even possible can anybody explain that to me? i don't care i don't care who it is send me an email to warren anarchy at outlook.com send me an email or better yet join the email list and communicate with me when i when i send you an email from that uh once a week if you go to toward anarchy.com it's right there underneath today's show whatever it is if it's march 1st you see jeff martinez if it's the future you see something else but right under it should be a banner that says sign up for the Anarch List weekly newsletter for show updates and guest info, giveaways, and more. And that's the idea. I'm trying to find ways to monetize the show. I created a pair of sneakers this week that I'm thinking about offering, they, like tennis shoes, Italian leather, a uh, nice high-top shoe uh, with my own sort of colors and, and uh, logo and things on it. And uh, I can go even further with it. There's different styles of shoes and things that I can offer, but they're, they're kind of expensive uh, when you think about it, uh, it just on the face. If you, if you roll back just a little bit, I haven't done this yet, and I'm trying to decide if I, if, if I will because we have to uh, get a commitment of orders uh, before they'll actually go into production. They're handmade Italian leather, made in Italy, shipped to you free, Anywhere in the United States or the UK um, or the EU. Uh, those are two different places now, in case you didn't know. Um, ridiculous orders. Um, <laughs> I, just get signed up for the email list. I'll send you some emails and, and you can keep up with each show. And I, I just have so much going on, and I almost broke down this week. I was sick, but I still won't get the shot. That's not going to happen. I saw somewhere people talking about the coronavirus, and they're saying uh, one of the things that they suggested was that you get the flu shot. What the hell for? What's that going to do? It has nothing to do with it. They're two different things. They're two different, they have completely distinct char- different characteristics. Uh, it's just ridiculous that, that that's the solution. Uh, I mean, I guess I could say – there was something positive about the fact that it was after wash your hands that they suggested that, but my, and hey, keep your hands away from your mouth. But I still managed to catch a few things that happened this week, and I did manage to watch an amazing show because it happened before I think I was really down. Um, I, I Jojo Rabbit came out on Blu-ray and hit the red box this past week, and uh, it was one that I thought it looked funny from the previews, and I wanted to see it. And if you haven't seen anything about Jojo Rabbit, it's about a young boy in uh, about 1945 Germany, somewhere right around in there. Uh, and he's, uh, you know, he buys into the whole Nazi propaganda and everything. I mean, it's so much to the point that uh, his best friend, his imaginary best friend, is actually Hitler himself. And it's just this hilariously, de- and it's, it, it trust me. I, I'm not making light of the situation or anyone that happened to have been through that or understands the history of it and and, and what happened in World War II. And and I don't believe that the author was either in in any sense of the word. But I I believe that it takes some talent to write a book and then create a story or a movie out of it that makes people laugh in the backdrop of World War II Germany – uh, a, a a kid that buys into it, parents that I, I don't want to give it all away, but uh, it, it, there's there's Jews around and and there's influence and there's learning and there's understanding, but it's hilarious, hilarious. Oh my god, uh, I just laughed so much and I <laughs> I laugh quite a bit. But and and this thing about me, I'm not sharing with you any movies or anything recently over the last few weeks. It's not that I'm not watching anything or that there's not any of that entertainment stuff going on because I'm always entertaining myself in the background. I'm not 100 percent serious all the time. I'm actually very much most of the time happy and having fun. Um, I just I watch it in like Netflix and not everybody has Netflix. We got to come back and wrap up the show. I can't believe it is already that close, but we'll be right back on Toward Anarchy. Unfortunately, time continues, or fortunately, I don't know, I guess it depends on your point of view. Some people don't want time to continue. Some people just want to see chaos reign. The rest of us, we want to live in anarchy, whether you realize it or not. Towardanarchy.com, next week, March 8th. 
Tony Z and Axel of Immortal Sin. It's rock and roll. It's heavy metal. It's um, amazing. It's voluntarist. It's um, it's a great conversation. It's another great conversation. March 15th, um, educator, announcer, friend of mine, my personal educator, John Berlue will join the show. And it's just, again, I expect another amazing conversation. I, I know maybe, uh, maybe I'm just imagining it. I don't know. I think the number of listeners and the fact that it grows every week and the number of people who visit the website every week says something different. Uh, March 22nd, Robert Long, the custom carver. Uh, well, guess what? Robert Long is a friend of mine, but he also has this amazing, cool business that he's starting up. And uh, I've, I've told you just in passing about these keychains that I have. I don't have my keys there over there. Can't reach them. Um, it, it's amazing little keychains that he's done. Just simple little stuff, but he does uh, like tile, uh, custom tile, and custom wood carving. It just it, he has these cool little machines and toys, and we'll talk to him about all that. And, and plus, we'll be catching up because he's a personal friend of mine. We haven't talked on the the phone in a while. It has been a couple of years at least since the last time I talked to him. Uh, which is another friend from back in the day. Maybe not as far back in the day as some of the people that I talked to, but. Um, certainly from my youth and um, just another person that sees another side of me and sees another side of the world. And is somebody that I'm interested uh, to, to pick up. Uh, I, the um, just a couple of things to mention that I saw this week and because I wanted to make this a point, because uh, you notice I kept saying it a couple of times through the show that I'm still not going to get the shot. And that's even after one U S uh, death from the coronavirus has been confirmed and it sounded like this probably person was probably not in good health uh just reading in passing um and and that's that's nothing it, what is it about eighteen thousand people a year that die of the flu most of those have complications of the flu it's it's another dishonest conversation that they have uh, when it comes to the flu shot thing is that the, the, these people die of the flu no the flu is opportunistic it takes advantage of people who are in ill health uh, and kills them ultimately so there's there's more to it than that healthy people don't tend to succumb to the flu uh, i'm living proof of it a few times in my life including this last week uh, my wife is living proof of it because she's ha she has whatever i had and she's pretty sure she got it from one of her kids at the school. And that's one of the worst things about these public schools, these little germy, spready thingies. But they, oh, what's the alternative? Not going around other people, right? Protect yourself. You think the shot's important? You take it. Just don't try to make me take it. That's what's important in that conversation. <laughs> Next week, you have to join me because I'll be talking to Tony Z and Axel of Immortal Sin. Take care until then. It's Toward Anarchy. This is RBN, the Republic Broadcasting Network.